Hey, maps. In this episode, I'm going to show you where you can get them and how to print them off for free. Join me on the computer here. Okay, everybody, please uh, excuse me. This is my first uh, on computer, recording the computer type tutorial. So uh, if I ramble a little bit, I'll try and edit it out. But uh, if not, please excuse me. Okay, so when you're thinking about maps, um, one of the best tools that I know of is uh, Google Earth. You can download this uh, on your computers, and it's a really unique tool. So here you have the Earth, and uh, it's a 3D map, basically, that Google's been going around recording everywhere. Uh, you can spin the globe manually with your little hand tool. You can just spin it like a basketball. All right, get to where you want. Now look, up here is the compass. You can turn this around. All right, so north is n north, south, east, and west. Um, there are all other tools here that affect your. This is a more like a tilt, tilt up and you'll see how, where this comes into play when we get closer uh, and then spin left or right all right or you can just grab the wheel on the outside this outside thing will actually it, it tra this is actually like a traveling tool so you can actually travel across your view and y if you hold your cursor down you see the shadowed area that will uh, indicate your direction of travel your azimuth that you're moving so pretty crazy and it's the same thing with the with the directional buttons you can hold your cursor down and it'll just be like live movement instead of trying to uh, manipulate the globe as it were okay so uh, one thing uh, if you look at the hand here if I have a roller on my on my mouse so if I scroll in on the scroll bar your scroll will go to wherever the hand is. So right here it's sort of center area, but if I come over here, it'll start to zoom in centered on that. And once again, it'll start centering in on that. It won't continue to zoom in in the center unless that's where your cursor is. All right, so you can choose any place you want whenever in, in your sector, all right? Or you could come up to the top left-hand corner here and type something in. Mount Rushmore, and then eventually it'll get to wherever, you know, whatever the default uh, thing is as far as what the labeling is, and it'll zoom into it. All right, and bam, there's Mount Rushmore. And then based off of the details down here in your layers, you can turn on and off different levels of uh, information that you want within your, uh, within your view here. So I have like borders and labels, photos, you can turn that off. You could see here that there's a bunch of photos, which could be useful if you're trying to do a, uh, you know, some kind of uh, map recon, you know, as you're doing some kind of terrain analysis, these photos around here gives you points of view from those particular places. Now that one isn't really, you know, here's the face of Mount Rushmore here. But this photo is like way over here, so some users put uh, they put their grids in uh, incorrectly, All right? And you can see at the bottom here that you have your coordinates, your UTM coordinates as of the well. This imagery data is as of 2011. Here are your coordinates in your cursor, and so it's another way to do your research by putting your cursor and thereby getting uh, your grid coordinates and thereby researching your waypoints you know if you if you have a, a path you want to take okay now this is just a CG graphic thing here it's kinda lame but uh, because it was all satellite imagery so I guess they didn't have any so you know you choose your direction from the compass up here and then you can either this is your tilt up or down your 
zoom in with your scroll wheel. Oop, again, wherever this, wherever your scroll wheel is pointed, that's where you're going to zoom into. All right, so. Plus, you can grab it and drag it. That'll bring the whole thing closer. So this is here is a zoom. All right, once you set your angle, you can grab your picture and move it over. It's pretty unique. Anyway, for, for a, uh, you know, a terrain analysis feature that's pretty uh, pretty cool. So let's uh, figure out how we can uh, use all these tools to get a map which you can uh, use on a trip. Okay, so let's put in uh, Mount Whitney. And we go there. Bam, Mount Whitney. So maybe you don't want to use UTM with all these decimals and stuff like that. Maybe you want to keep it simple. Well, there are uh, applications that can be applied to this, like uh, MGRS. So what you can do is uh, look for, uh, do a Google search of MGRS. All right, and so you got to do some searching, but here there's this link right here www.nearby.org.uk, Google HTML number 17. All right, and right up here, the worldwide MGRS grid lines layer. Maybe just go ahead and Google that one since I've given you the cheat right here. So click on that. It's going to open it up, and you want to open it with, it's going to, the default should be Google Earth if you already have it loaded in your computer. So you hit OK, and bam, you'll notice that it comes up under here. And you can see, this is kind of a busy area. Mount Whitney's kind of a busy area. Let's uh, go someplace else. Again, I'm scrolling out with my, with my mouse wheel. And bam, there we go. Okay, so now we're in a, uh, a planar area with less busyness. Uh, you can see, basically, when the grid lays on, it's... Uh, and it, it changes depending on how far zoomed in you are. So right now, all of the green lines represent, you can see how it changes here in your places here. So the yellow lines represent 100 kilometer uh, grid squares. The green lines represent 10 kilometer grid lines. So each of these green spaces here represent 10 kilometers. So if we zoom in to our objective or area of operations, uh, the grid will adjust to give us uh, more detail. Just have to wait for it. There we go. And we're waiting and waiting. Okay, but there you go. Bam. So now each of these grid squares are one kilometer square. Okay. Can you tell, obviously, what the... Uh, I mean, you can use this right now to uh, develop waypoints. All right? You move your cursor, and you get your, uh, you know, your grid number. So you can determine waypoints to establish a route. You can also... And you can... Uh, you can also, of course, use... Uh, the terrain with the grid reference you know as you analyze terrain so okay you want to climb you want to climb this mountain well which is the best way to hit it up you know so you got to get in close change your change your perspective to give uh, the relief some kind of uh, context here rotate around which is the easiest slope yada yada all right and your grids are all are, are all there you can see it Okay, you could see the relief and how it's gonna, how it could potentially affect your march. But when you go back out to uh, to get your uh, grids, and you go back out to uh, you know to your wider view, um, you'll notice suddenly that uh, now it's gone back 
to kind of an abstract form where the terrain doesn't really mean anything to you if you uh, take this as a snapshot and use it as a map to navigate with on foot. So, you know, you can take the snapshot absolutely and uh, post it in a, an application like Microsoft PowerPoint or maybe Microsoft Paint, you know, crop all this other stuff away from what you're uh, from what you need so just leaving the picture with the grids on it and if this is enough for you you may be able to navigate you know using dead reckoning all right but not being able to use th this information uh, as good as if you had a topographical map where all of the relief the terrain relief was uh, designated by uh, you know the relief lines so using this has its limitations it can be used uh, but for real land navigation on the ground you need a topographical map and we are going to uh, learn why right now so but this is one thing that you could use uh, definitely a big tool for terrain analysis and trying to figure out how you're going to get there you know in the broad strokes but when you start talking about the real nitty-gritty of, of land nav you're gonna need uh, a topographical map so you go to Google again okay so back in Google but where do you start what is it that uh, that you do well you can start with your parks all right or you can start with your monuments uh, but the question is what do you search for you know so uh, you can look for uh, parks you want to go to, right? So Sequoia National Forest, okay? And maybe even further the pro the que the problem with always the problem with Google and searching is you don't know what questions to ask. So maybe Sequoia National Forest uh Topo maps. Bam. And then you're going to come up, you got to weed through all this stuff because uh, uh, what you're going to get uh, are uh, is a myriad of marketing stuff, maps for sale, you know, all kinds of stuff that uh, you're going to have to weed through before you can find uh, what you really need. Uh, because everyone wants to sell people stuff. I want to see like all this stuff over here, this is all for sale you know, maybe stuff to go into your uh, your GPS so you can have your topo map loaded on your GPS, which is all fine and good, but um, y so you have to do your research. Continue on to the next page, you know, but some of these places will recommend what uh, quadrangles you need to get, and that's what's important. What are the quadrangle maps that you need? Uh, that's what you need to search for. So when you're able to find out what quadrangle, then you can search, uh, you know, once you find out what quadrangle you're looking for, then you can search uh, with those terms. So we were looking at Mount Whitney before, so let's uh, try that. Mount Whitney quad, bam. Okay, and what is this? I don't know, let's go check it out. All right. Huh. Bam. Uh, okay. Windows Photo Viewer. Okay. Bam. Okay. So, it looks like a map. <laughs> Okay, so uh, once you find your maps, that's great. But what we got to do now is we have to. I'm gonna. Sh we have to talk about how we're gonna get this off of your computer, right? And how. Notice these USGS maps. They don't have any grid lines, all right. They've got tick marks on the outside, all right. They've got these tick marks. Uh, but they're not attached, and so you have, you know, if you're just using this as this, 
you got a whole lot of nothing there for reference as far as determining, you know, putting in all these grids and determining your distance based off of your pace count. So we have to figure out a way to one, put, put the grids on there, and two, once we get the grids on there, how to get it out of the computer.